Well, how about um, moving on to the next topic? Uh, another one that we get asked a lot about at the Tourette Syndrome Association, and I'm sure you guys talk with your patients about, are complementary and alternative symptoms or treatments about complementary and alternative treatments. Uh, Sam, you and a, and a group of the Medical Advisory Board have worked pretty hard at trying to help us kind of understand what those treatments are and, and uh, kind of what we should say to families and patients uh, about this approach to, to managing Tourette. I'm not sure that I would uh, address it as, as necessarily treatments because by its very nature the, the concept of complementary and alternative health care often is meant to uh, address well, well-being in general rather than um, uh, dealing with pathology so, or, or, um, or illness. So the, um, and in fact the, the, the term itself is now becoming a little bit passe and, and I think the, the more accepted term for complementary and alternative medicine is integrative health care and sometimes holistic. But I think probably a good way of thinking about these approaches are those that have not been rigorously studied in our traditional randomized controlled uh, ways that, that help us uh, decide based uh, that help give us evidence based support that these are effective and many of the many of the approaches now that we do use that we consider to be traditional started out as alternative we see it in the uh, in the media we hear it from our patients all the time certainly it's been um, my, my two areas of interest and in work primarily focus on Tourette syndrome and in autism I published an article on Tourette syndrome that that caught the uh, the, the popular media the responses were somewhat unexpected and one of the things I'll, I'll mention one of one one of the statements I made in my article was uh, sort of a, 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 a generalization that uh, any particular uh, complementary alternative approach in, in treating, and I, I was focusing on, on treatment, Tourette syndrome ha has yet to be proven. And this was, uh, this was taken up by, a, by, uh, by, by some forces within, within, uh, within the, uh, the advocacy uh, groups of, of complementary and alternative medicine to to mean that I had said that these are ineffective and the term used was worthless, which is which is not uh, the what was not what I had said nor what I had implied. But it also was I think a, a red flag that this is an issue that that certainly is uh, viewed with with great passion and uh, commitment by a lot of people, and we need to understand it. So uh, what we have done in the Tourette Syndrome Association is we've uh, pulled together a, a small group of, of interested members on the medical advisory board and have put together, put out a, basically a position statement and a summary of, of the literature as best we can. So, so what do we know about um, these, these strategies, uh, this kind of health care uh, and Tourette syndrome? Not a lot. Unfortunately, there's, there's, a, well, there's, a, there's an ongoing study right now, actually. I reference this uh, quite often. Someone on, uh, who will be speaking uh, later today, too, is, is uh, conducting the, 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 the first uh, well-designed large uh, uh, trial looking at omega-3s, or fish oil in, in this case, um, and its impact in Tourette syndrome. And uh, uh, this will be a, pl a randomized controlled, placebo-controlled trial. So we'll have some interesting data. So, so what's your experience with these, uh, this form of health care and your patients? What, what are they saying to you? What do you, what do, you do? My, my experience has been that, that uh, the in integrative medicine or complementary alternative medicine is probably at the stage that Western medicine was maybe 50, 60 years ago, which was the wild, wild west. And there are uh, many things uh, out there that are in this field that are highly valuable, that are nuggets. But the problem that uh, this presents for the public and to us as practicing in traditional medicine is that it's very hard to find these nuggets. And it's very hard to separate them from things that are not well proven or um, maybe even harmful as we have seen in the literature in, in the past few years. And certainly none of it has been tested or very little of it has been tested in, in, in Tourette in a rigorous manner. You know, I, I agree with Sam's uh, earlier comment that the, uh, the, the uh, complementary and alternative medicine movement, if we were to call it that, occurs in other disorders as well. Um, and I do think it stems from a dissatisfaction with the treatments that we have to offer. And uh, when parents come in and talk to me, I, I acknowledge that we don't have all the answers. And and uh, and try to join with them that that um, if they have reasonable other treatments that I'd even help them try to figure out if they will work. 
But um, I do have some problems with some of the uh, complementary and alternative medicine treatments. It's sort of the reverse of the nuggets of things that are, that are questionable in their safety, and people are charging money for them without having studied them. And uh, in the autism field right now, there's a lot of concern about certain brands of chelation treatment mm -hmm. that, that look to be uh, somewhat worrisome, and they're not cheap. Something that is of tremendous advantage, I think, in uh, independent providers of integrative health care that, that, that I know that I can't uh, do as well as I would like is there, there often is uh, an unlimited amount of, uh, they talk about the three T's uh, in integrative health care, which are, are very influential and important, and I think that we need to be mindful to help to use in any kind of health care provision, and that's uh, talking, taking the time to talk to patients, uh, or rather should, talking with them, really talking with them, uh, second T is, t uh, is time, so uh, uh, having perhaps not, uh, not s such limitations in the amount of time that we can spend with families, and touching uh, patients. Uh, and m many of the approaches in integrative health care actually do focus on touch itself, but also touch uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, as, as, a, as a means of communication also are highly effective and influential. Um, and uh, things that probably we, uh, we underestimate in terms of uh, the impact that we can have if we also include these in our approaches. Yeah, I think most uh, uh, kind of traditional Western, um, other than touching through the physical exam, um, there's whole, not a whole lot of touching that would occur and, and probably some sense that there are prohibitions against some of that kind of touching. And uh, talking, there's not much time. and time there's not much time so so much of western medicine is is hampered in all of those domains yeah. so if you have a family that comes in and says you know we've tried your treatments doctor we want to try something else what, what do you say i think i have to understand this on an individual basis i families have uh, come in with with uh, variable degrees of, of experiences um, biases and understandings some of them have a more complementary uh, philosophy and some of them have a more alternative philosophy and i think that as best i can i try to explore um, the the incentives for this it's important i think that for all of us that we feel a sense of autonomy and self-empowerment and uh, that's one of the essences of 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 integrative health care that perhaps is neglected in in uh, allopathic health care that we need to pay attention to a couple of uh, in, in, in short periods of time that I have with the family, I, I try to uh, give a couple of buzz concepts, buzzwords, uh, safety and efficacy, and, and what information we have based on uh, uh, based on, on, on evidence and or anecdote. I provide them with some uh, reference resources. So if they're, um, I think, you know, some there are some docs who take real strong views about this. Uh, like you said in the beginning, there are passions uh, about this, maybe more passion than there is science. Um, but there are docs who take some real strong views. So you're encouraging people to, to kind of walk through uh, and have a discussion with patients about this issue rather than take that strong point of view. John, I, I, I try to pay attention to the journey that the family has come. Um, because a lot of times it, it's come, uh, it comes out that they feel that they've tried the standard approaches and, and they've run out the string. Um, and, and, and so part of what I, the discourse I try to get into is what are they really looking for? Are they looking for something that they, they simply cannot find? And so if that's true, they're just going to keep kind of bouncing from one thing to the other. And they're going to be, you know, sort of going after the next thing that they that they learn about. Uh, and so there has to be some confrontation, in a gentle way, of what it is that they're hoping they're going to really get out of this. And this is a, a a big issue in Tourette, and it's a big issue in autism. If they're looking for the eradication of ticks, for example, I try to explain to them that that is not a particularly useful goal because it's not likely to be achieved. Um, if they're looking for the you know, complete elimination of difficulties in learning that might occur in a child with Tourette, then I try to help them see that maybe that's chasing after something that won't happen. Well, I, I like that one. Uh, Jorge? I was going to say that I use what's available out there, particularly when they bring it to me, as just a tool to provide some of that autonomy, validation, and, 
and empowerment that they're looking for. And I see my role as simply pointing out the things that I don't agree with because there, there's uh, concerns about safety. So that uh, behooves you as a practitioner to at least provide that screen for the safety issue. I don't, I don't vouch for the efficacy, but I, I must say that in being fair and balanced that, that uh, I don't know one way or the other and that they have to be circumspect as how do they spend their money. And this is particularly true for the expensive things. So I tell them I, you know, it doesn't bother me and I don't see anything dangerous with it, but I also can tell you there's uh, very little data to support its use. It sounds like uh, from what we've been talking about is that we really should be talking to our patients, um, spending time with them. And I guess the other part is um, maybe not um, be talk about the evidence for our treatments and the evidence for complementary and alternative treatments on a kind of even keel, if you will. I know that sometimes people uh, push their own uh, version of, of treatment too strong and families don't trust it when they feel like they're under some kind of pressure and, and then begin to think about alternatives. And they're frightened by some of the, the treatments that we use because they can have side effects. Um, so, so talking with them, spending time with them, and, and kind of talking about the treatments we have evidence for, the treatments we don't have evidence for, and, and helping guide parents walk through that, patients and parents walk through that maze um, so that they feel comfortable and can make good decisions pro probably is a it's good medical strategy in general, but probably helps people walk through, through this issue um, uh, perhaps with some more clarity.